All right, let's talk about the Tremor 3 reticle for PRS. How would you use it? Let's take a look at some targets here. I've got these kind of set up like a troop line, A, B, C, D, E. And over here I've got how far those will be in our example. <clears throat> and for the sake of reference, we're going to say we're, we'll shoot these little squares. These are about a minute and a half. This is what I'm kind of measuring these at. These are about 0.4 mils. So yeah, that's about a minute and a half, maybe 1.6 minutes, something like that. But let's go ahead and shoot at these squares, A, B, C, D, E. They're at these different distances, and I've got how much of a come up we need to use. If you're not using MRAD, you need to change your ways because no one uses MOA these days. You go to a match, everyone's going to be talking in MRAD, and I've been to a match using a MOA scope before, and the disconnect is real. Don't do it. Use MRAD. All right. <clears throat> so let's talk about the Tremor 3 reticle in this example. How to use this reticle. We have our basics. Um, if you don't know this, you should get on with it. But let's say that we have a left to right wind. And I'm going to hold into the wind. Uh, let's call it like a 5 miles per hour wind. At 350 yards, I can probably hold, you know, 0.2. So I'll basically put my 0.2 right there over the A. So some people might talk about holding the edge of the plate at this point, but more scientifically, I'm going to put, put this 0.2 mark right here. These are all in uh, point, point 0.2 increments. So you have 0 is your dot, you have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. <clears throat> so here I'm going to hold 0 0.2. All right, this is kind of the basics of how we shoot. Um, let's say that I'm off by 0.2. I can make a correction to be right here and obviously just make that work with my wind. How to use this Tremor 3 reticle um, with the holdovers. Do you see these big dots? Everyone hates the big dots. They say they're trash, that they cover up the targets. And yeah, you can kind of see it a little bit obscures our targets there. But honestly, the lines are so thin that it's not that big of a deal. Compare that with something like the PR2 reticle here. You can see it's pretty open, but those lines are still pretty thick. Those can obscure things as well. It's up to you to decide what you want for your reticle. We're covering the Tremor 3 today. I'll cover the, the PR2 eventually. So let's say on this target, let's say we're not going to dial at all. Instead of dialing 1.3 and then holding dead center, let's say we're only going to leave the, tar the, the turrets at zero. And we're going to hold 1.3, right? So we'll come up here to 1.3. And here you can see, there's 1.2.3. So right in between these two hashes, we got the center line on there. So that's 1.3. Our next target's at 2.4 at B. So we go over here to 2.5.4. And that's what we hold here. So that works pretty well. What these dots are for, or each one of these should be calibrated. Let's say we're shooting my 6XC that I used to have, which shot the 112 match burners at 2930. And each one of these dots, if we have a full crosswind, ends up being 6 miles per hour. So it'll just correspond. If we say the wind feels like 6 miles per hour, we hold that dot. So for that A, we'd go to 1.3. We would hold 6 miles per hour. Just about there. And then for the next target, at 2.4, we come up here to go 2.4, right about there, 6 miles per hour. Right there. That would be where we shoot. And so on and so forth. We go to target C, which is 3.7 is what we hold here. So there's target C. We're going to hold 3.7, 6 miles per hour. Now, not all the time do we have a full crosswind, so I actually calibrated these dots for four different areas. I mean, you should be using a calculator, you should be using a Kestrel and all that to get exact stuff, but in the case that you don't have any electronics on you, you can still use this fairly well. So, let's say we have a 70 mile cro per, or sorry, a 70 degree crosswind that is uh, 6 miles per hour, or actually, the dots are 5 miles per hour at <laughs> 70 degrees. So let's say the wind is at 70 degrees. So each one of those is five, five miles per hour. So let's say that the wind is six. So we're going to hold it 
right about there. So on and so forth. You calibrate these dots for, you know, the different directions. Um, I'll leave you to that. Uh, you can do a, a rose wind or wind rose. Um, Sniper's Hide has an updated one. You can look that up. I'll probably put it in the description because it's an excellent resource for determining your, your wind rose. But anyways, that kind of gives you the idea of how you're supposed to do this. I'll give another example of one time I was at a match where the wind was about 35 miles per hour, sometimes 40 mile per hour gusts. It was ridiculous. And let's go to a target at a common distance of, you know, five, 500. So let's go to B. And we'll dial, or we'll come up 3.7. Go right there. Now, if it's a full crosswind. If each one of those dots is six miles per hour, then we need to come over, what, six dots? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm holding all the way out here just to hit that B target. So you can see that it's nice to have an actual wide tree. Going back to that, that PR2, if I were doing the exact same thing there at 500 yards, 2.4, I'd be right here if I had to hold. And we did have on this, on this uh, match, there was a no, a no dial stage, so we had to use our reticle. It was the worst possible conditions for it. Not super common, but it happens. So let's say I have to hold out there. What were we holding at that point? That was 2.4 at 500, mile, or 500 yards at 6. Yeah, it's almost 2.1 mils holdover for wind. So we come over here to our 2.4. And then we hold way out here. <laughs> that's that's not covered in the tree. That's open space there. That's kind of why I don't like some of these open designs. I prefer some of the ones like the Mill XT. Let me see if I can pull that one up real quick. That's why I like stuff like the Mill XT reticle here. You can see at 2.4, we're going to hold over about two mils. Yeah, I still have reference points in the reticle. That's why I like the tree to be a little bit more full up here. This is not too busy. You see, this is what the PR2 looks like. And once again, what the Tremor 3 looks like. Tremor 3 has a lot of stuff going on, but if you know how to use it, it can be very helpful. We'll cover some of the other reticles in other videos. Thanks, guys.